All right, Monochrome Memoirs, episode, what is this? Episode four, baby? I think it's four, yeah. All right. We're episode four. We're already there. Yeah. I mean, we had a podcast with Mick Millman uh, the other day, but unfortunately we made a rookie mistake and we screwed up the audio. Bummer. That was a bummer because that was a great <laughs> podcast. I really enjoyed that. I Sorry, know. Sorry, Mick. It was good. But we, we got Mick on the podcast next week. Yeah. So we can talk to uh, to him again and basically just come up with new stuff. Yeah. He's an easy guy to talk to. Yeah, he was great. Uh, but today we are extremely excited because we have our friend Scott Stockton on the podcast. Oh, yeah. He's a wedding photographer from North Carolina. And this guy, he's been one of the supporters, early supporters of the channel. Yeah. And, I mean, we're kind of in love with his stuff. Oh, yeah. There's so many cool shots that he takes when I went through his photos. I was like, yes, that's awesome. Yes, that's so cool. Because it's different. Yeah, and it's fun, and it's it's not boring, and it, like, yeah, it's very enjoyable. Exactly, and he yeah. has a signature style, I feel like. A yeah. lot of people in the wedding industry now just want to copy shit that they see. Oh, yeah. Uh, Pinterest. Bleh. I just yeah. freaking can't stand <laughs> it. So when we see somebody that's good, you know, we can... I don't know. We know a lot of new people are following this channel and people who just got into, you know, the wedding industry. So we want to provide some info that you guys can kind of, you know, take oh, and sure. incorporate. So oh, yeah. without further ado, we'd like to introduce our friend Scott Stockton. Scott, how's it going, buddy? Hey, how y'all doing? Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, thanks for that intro. <laughs> you, is that <laughs> the nicest know. thing that somebody said to you all week? <laughs> Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Y'all have me feel myself for a second. That's better than uh, the stuff I hear from my wife. That's so right. That. Dust off your shoulder real quick. Yeah, right? you know, I'm just yeah. going <laughs> to leave and come back into some music. like w. <laughs> w. Red something. car. We'll give you the red dun, carpet dun, next dun. time. Yeah. And you know what? I was glad to hear that you guys uh, screwed something up with the, oh, with the recording. Is oh that my something God. I would do? <laughs> I would do it at like a crucial moment, like videoing like my kid's soccer game or something like that. Something <laughs> yeah. that you truly can't get it back. Yeah, exactly. Your but, first uh, steps. I'm glad that everybody's human then. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, we had a great yeah. podcast, but uh yeah, it was just the first one and, and we had uh you know, we screwed up the audio and then instantly I went on Amazon and ordered like eight hundred dollars worth of stuff. I was like, This isn't happening again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what you do, man. Yeah. Exactly. After something like that. Um, but yeah, man. So we just wanted to talk to you about the wedding business. Like we said in the intro, man, like we're just we're not gassing you up. We really came across your work and it seemed it jumped out to us as a lot yeah. different. Um, you know, Sarah and I spend a lot of time really trying to make something that's not the same as the wedding photography that you see out there. And yeah. I feel like today, especially with, you know, all the social media, Instagram and everything, it's real easy just to hop online, find some inspiration and then just copy it and, you know, kind of get away with the style like that. So when we saw your stuff, we were like, wow, dude, this guy's like authentic. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. Man, I appreciate that. Well, uh, you, you know, I think about cut you off. Sorry about that. No, it's just no. We, give, we give credit where it's due, man. So, yeah. um, you know, we kind of wanted to start this off like talking about. Well, first of all, like you're from North Carolina. Have you did you grow? Did you grow up there? Did you start your business in that area? So I started my business here, but I was uh, I was born here, but I lived in Germany for like 16, 17 years. Mm. Uh, my dad was in the army. Nice. Um, I wish I had been in photography when I was growing up there with all that scenery and um, heck yeah, you know, the vineyards and mountains and all that cool stuff. But uh, I didn't get into it till after we had kids, mm -hmm. and uh, we were uh, we're like, God, we got to start capturing these moments properly. So we went out and bought a, I think we got a Sony a6000, just something where you could change lenses. Yep. And I think that was kind of the bottom of the barrel at the moment. And uh, we got a few lenses, some 35s, and I kind of stayed in the Sony family for a while. I got an a7, mm -hmm. an a7R, and this is just kind of farting around. This is before I figured out that I wanted to be a uh, wedding photographer. Yeah. And uh, what kind of steered me that way is, I'm like a I'm like a huge softy. I'm watching Hallmark movies, <laughs> like the the stuff that like I would get made fun of like growing up and stuff. Like any a Tom Hanks or Meg Ryan movie, yeah. I'm watching it. You've got <laughs> all, all that stuff. So I was kind of like a love nerd growing up. Yeah, and uh, you know just something in the back of my head, I would always watch these corny movies. And it wasn't until uh, a friend of my wife's got engaged, and we were like, well, hey, we we take pictures of the family. Can we go? Uh, take pictures of Elena, blah, 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 and just, you know, give her something for free so she doesn't have to pay. And I was like, cool, we'll try that. And like immediately fell in love. It's like, oh, oh shit, I'm getting that same kind of 
warm, fuzzy feeling, uh, shooting people in love that I did when I'm sitting on the couch eating popcorn. And, oh, wow. and sadly, when I'm watching Hallmark, it's like whiskey. <laughs> Like there's just like a it's like a pie of stuff that shouldn't go together. Yeah, but, yep. uh, that's what I'm doing. And that's uh, as soon as I shot that engagement shoot, it kind of just took off from there. It's like this is what I got to do, and uh, I'm still kind of in the battle of leaving the nine to five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm a software programmer, so it's a uh, I have to kind of earn similar to what I make now consistently before my wife and I are like, okay, you can pull the plug. So trying to do it safely. Um, but still as quickly as I can. Cause, uh, God, I love this. Sure, man. And you know, that's so, it's good to talk to somebody who's actually still in the realm of like, you know, Hey, this, this is gonna be my, my job, but it's not 100% there yet because man, so many people that are going to be listening to this are in that same like realm yeah. and it's good to talk to it because I remember me and Sarah like we're trying to juggle you know the jobs and you know the wedding stuff it's really I mean the wedding stuff's a full-time job in itself yeah yeah I mean but it's also great to hear that you love it so much yeah. you know because that's so important you know and like we've had this conversation so many times about people that do it for money you know, mm. and it's not, that's not what it's about. So it's really cool to hear that, like, you're like, I want to get rid of the nine to five because I love it so much. And that's really cool. Oh, yeah. No, it's, yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it's like the, it's the best thing you can do. I mean, yeah. to be, to have the privilege to take somebody's, to tell the story of someone's most special day from start to finish. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. And then to, yeah, you're crazy. the one with the cameras and you get to tell the story. You get to pick the angles. and Yeah, the way you see it, you know. Yeah. yeah. You have to have a soft spot to be like in this industry as like a photographer and stuff. I definitely think that you, you got to be a little bit of a softy. Yeah. And you have to just be <laughs> able to like really appreciate people, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean, Love. that's the thing is I, I think uh, a lot of people get into this um, when they first start photography, they see that weddings are an easy source of income because you know people pay the money's there yeah. um but the thing is is you're going to get burned out extremely extremely quickly if you're not really really in love with telling people's authentic stories yeah, yeah. no that's the truth because uh, i mean i remember listening to your first podcast and talking about kind of um really what a wedding day is like and mm. the stresses and uh, you're managing time expectations people all this stuff, the timeline changes. There's so much like it's it's like a little mini war that you're going into of dealing with people and tight time frames. And you still have to produce and you still have to capture all these great moments and stuff like that. So it if you don't love it, if you don't love this shit, it's just not it's not for you. You you maybe you need to be shooting like models or something like that where they're you know, you can kind of stand them off over here. Yeah, right, great. Right. Hold that. Yeah, Um, Yeah, because there's a creative like, you know, Will and I like we 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 have to get creative like in a wedding like we feel like we have to create something and sometimes that's really hard and you have to find the perfect moment to do that and you have to make sure it's timed well. I mean, I always talk with our brides, um, you know, like a week or two before and they always ask me like, where should I put my time? Like, what should I do? And I try to lead them you know, towards like more time for photography or do the first look or, you know, do something so that you can get those pictures that we create, like the ones that they love, they go like they're googly eyed for, they love those, you know, that takes time. I mean, it's, it really does. I mean, yesterday our bride was great because she gave us that time. And yesterday we had a wedding and it was literally, I think the most amount of time we've ever had doing portraits. And it was, I, I, like Sarah and I were eating, we had, you know, we got the the buffet and once the night was winding down and I'm sitting there and I'm like, honey, I have so many ideas that are just like pouring out of me right mm-hmm. now for like portraits. And yeah. it was because we weren't rushed. And, and like, it goes back to what you were saying, like wedding days are absolutely insane. And so if you think like you can't manage the whole situation all the time. Sometimes you have to come in with the mentality of just, Hey, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And I'm going to do my best to capture and make something like unique, but yeah. it's, it's pressure. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's it is crazy pre- pressure. And every wedding I go to, and I'm you guys probably the same. There's always like epic shots that you're like, I I definitely want to get this. Yes, yeah, I have to get this. Or like, because we'll probably get to the venue early. We're walking around. We're seeing oh cool spots. I can do a great silhouette there, or mm-hmm. we can do something fun over here. And then then the bride and groom show up, and the wedding planner shows up, and <laughs> oftentimes I'll see like a lot of these visions I had. Just I'll see an X just cover one of them, and then the next one. Gets <laughs> I'm like, mother, if they don't leave me with one of these, yeah. I know. <laughs> but it's just like, uh, yeah. So I'm envious of you guys yesterday that you had a bride that's just like, you know, here have all this time because I uh, I would love, and it happens every now and then for me too. So it's it's all on. Uh, uh, the bride and groom you're dealing with and i try to tell totally. them similar to you guys with setting expectations of uh just like you were just saying sarah talking with the bride like okay tell me what you like most uh if you like these bride and groom shots that you see yeah. us post up and things like that then you're gonna have to allot us a certain amount of time so that we can do that yeah or it might be golden hour it could be blue hour yeah. whatever you like the most i want to do that for you but you gotta you gotta let me do it at the time so we can do it <sighs> Man, I hope the new guys are really listening to this right now, because if you're just getting into weddings, you need to listen to what what Scott just said there. You need to have conversations with your brides beforehand and make sure you're managing these expectations, because if they think that you're just going to get every single portfolio shot that you've gotten in your, you know, in your portfolio, you can recreate those or... I mean, they have to know that if they want epic shots, they're going to have to manage the time correctly. Yeah, I mean, a great tip that um, I can give give newbies or anybody really is that what I do is because some brides like to come in and say, well, I want this shot or I want that shot or I like this or here's my Pinterest board or follow me on Pinterest. And what I do is I say, here's what you can do is you can go on to our Instagram or our Facebook facebook and you can like the picture or i do do hashtag fave and then i know where i was for that photo what time of day it was you know so then i can say okay well this bride this was at blue hour this was at sunset or this was at a first look and if you want that photo then this is what we have to do and this is how we have to create your timeline to get it so i have them do our photos just so i know what's going on and i know where i was at for that these yeah. expectations. It's what it is. Yeah. So, Scott, do you have like extended conversations with your brides like up to? Do you always offer an engagement shoot? Do you try and meet with them before and talk about this stuff? Oh, yeah. Big time. I'm 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 like a super planner. Nice. And I like I I get everywhere I'm supposed to be early and leave late. And I, I, I emphasize uh, to all photographers, but I guess newbies mostly is to get there early. Yeah. Um, mm. I show up to venues probably an hour before I'm supposed to be there just so I can walk around and pick all my favorite spots. I see this. This will be cool. I, I just – you can't I, – I just feel like you can't be uh, prepared enough, especially for stuff like that. But getting back to you, uh, yeah, as much as I can meet, a lot of my brides are local. We've got to breweries. Um, I love right. that about your photography, by the way. Sorry. Yeah, the brewery? Uh, no, just how you bring them, like the chicken nugget, the ring, the tacos. Oh, yeah. The <laughs> chicken nugget. I love that Let about your photography. You, Chick fil A. Yeah. Do you have the Chick fil A's up there? Yeah, we, we ha- listen, dude. The <laughs> first one in our area within like a 50 mile radius just opened up, and the place was literally <laughs> slant. Like it took like an hour through the drive through. I mean, it's, it's insane now. It's heavenly. It's Those so good. good. And, it, and here in the South, I, I shit you not, I think every wedding I've shot, the the bridesmaids have had it catered by Chick Fil A. Come on, it, it, what? I, I I could go through and maybe I'll do uh, this. I could go through and com- whole wedding galleries and get to the getting ready spot, and we'll see just shitloads of Chick Fil A. <laughs> like, All right, sweet tea. We got we got a question for you. Do you need a second and third shooter? <laughs> Do hey you? man, I was you know, I was gonna ask you yeah. tag along with y'all. I would love it. Yeah, we would love night. that. <laughs> that carousel shot y'all had is crazy. Oh, that was but, cool, right? Yeah, the nugget stuff that is fun. Um, and then I think I did a Taco Bell one. Yeah, but that was I'm, great. I'm a lot like you guys, and I I I know I know a little bit about you guys just from listening to your your podcast. Mm. But um, I like that. You guys also don't like to just go out there and say, okay, face each other, okay. kiss yes. each other, next yes. shot, let's go to the next thing. You try to figure out 
what they love, what, you know, yep. where were you on your first day? Is that special to you guys? Let's go there. Maybe we can get a few shots there. And then from there, go to the next cool place, like find stuff that, um, has special meaning to you guys. And cause I, I think people, I and mean, you guys are the same way. I think people would like those shots better. So like, yeah, if, yep. if you guys met at a winery or a brewery, let's mm-hmm. go there and get some shots of y'all having a few pints and hanging out and laughing. Because that's, that's what you would do in a brewery, and that's what you probably did on your first date. One hundred percent. From there, we'll go somewhere else that means a lot. Or if something doesn't mean a lot, we'll find something beautiful and make that work too. But yeah, um, yeah. but uh, yeah, I, just meeting with them ahead of time, getting on phone calls with them before engagement shoots, doing all this conversation we're doing now, finding out what they like. Mm-hmm. Um, how they met, and um, I just don't like to schedule shoots without getting that information, because mm-hmm. um, I think we can do so much more for these people, knowing their full stories and everything that they love and like sure. before we even start shooting. Man, he's a, he is a lot like us. He, you have yeah. a lot, you have a lot of the same type of mindsets as as we do when we go out shooting, because I feel like nowadays. People, um, obviously, this isn't everybody, but a lot of people go into wedding photography just wanting to get shots for them and so they just try and like go in with pre-planned poses and just try and just get like wow shots rather than focusing intently on the couple and not even like you know one thing that i really do is before every wedding is i try and just kind of take a moment come down to my office and just like be by myself and just think for a second and just be like like recenter my mind on the fact that this is truly about the couple here and like I'm going to like my 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 purpose going into this wedding is to like exalt their story and not just try and intervene and like manipulate to get what I want out of it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a and that's so true. And that's a that's a hot pro tip right there, my friend. <laughs> yeah, it's listen, you said something the other day that I, that I was able to, to learn from a bit. Because this is something I'll still make a mistake on. But I think a lot of newbies make this mistake a lot. They'll show up to a wedding and they'll just be thinking about the heaters, yes. the bangers, yeah. the epic shots that they want to take. And then they'll get they'll get stuck on that. And I've, I've had this happen to me before, especially when I started. I'll see a shot that I, ha- I feel like I have to get. And then I'll try to force that issue and mm. instead of thinking, is this something that they want? Exactly. Maybe they might not right. want this. Right. And while I'm focused on this, I could be missing some dope moments mm-hmm. or some more intimate moments. Not everything has to be a heater. And that's something that it probably took me about 20 weddings or so to learn. Okay, you don't have to come in here and fo- uh, force epicness. Um, if you so see true. something and the time a lot, we'll take it. If not, let's get these moments. Right. But uh, you said that on your, your, I believe it was your first or your second podcast the other day. And that hit me in the head listening to that. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, man. it really is. It's about the moments, like almost in between the moments. And that yeah. stuff you cannot pick up if you're just constantly thinking about, dude, I need this epic backlit shot or this crazy silhouette with the sunset. Like right. our best shots are the ones or the ones that most meaningful that the brides and the grooms, they always love the most are always the ones that are never really set up. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the wow yeah. shots, they come and go, but they're not the ones that stand the test of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll even say like when I go back into our like wedding album of Will and I's wedding, um, my favorite shots, because we had an amazing photographer in Colorado, um, are the ones that are in between the moments too that were just Will and I walking and we were talking and we were laughing and there was one my shawl was just flying off and that was totally candid and my hair was crazy and those are the best moments though there's a family photo of Will and I from our and our kids from the wedding where I have my leg kicked up and I'm like laughing so hard and the kids are just heads are like in between my arms and it was completely candid yeah and yeah. those are the moments that I love the most from my own wedding. So when I go into a wedding, I think of the bride and I think, well, where are her favorite moments? Like, what do I see that, like, I know that I'll love, like, myself, you know, and it makes me feel good. Yeah. So, and it takes yeah. the focus off you. So it's not selfish. You know, yeah. I, be- I truly believe um, that selfishness can be transferred in an image you know what i'm saying like it loses the um the it can be it can be very 
beautiful. It can be pretty, but it, it can lose the compelling element to it if it's if it's coming from somewhere that's like inauthentic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And so, I, well, you know, yeah, I just I the one thing that is always interests me, man, is talking to like other photographers. Like, what do you do? So, OK, so just a little uh, just a little context here. Sarah and I kind of like are going through something right now where. Our cameras are like, we talked with Mick on the last show about this, but our cameras are sort of like associated with work for us right now because we're so busy and we're doing so many weddings. Yeah. It's hard to get back in that stage where we're just like creating for us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so do you, do you actively push yourself to go out there and like do like personal work and get creative and like kind of find new things to keep you inspired? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Along with the shooting, obviously, I still have that nine to five. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a beast. But mm -hmm. what I have been doing is shooting a lot of stuff that I, I typically don't shoot. So I've been shooting some models with some brands. Oh, uh, nice. I shot a gender reveal. But something about the shooting the models with brands that's been fun and interesting is kind of learning more how to pose women that pose translates them. also to shooting the brides. Heck yeah. But yeah. it's a different kind of shooting. It's fun. And because it's different, it kind of, it shakes things up and it actually kind of, it gives you like a little reset. So once that next couple shoot comes along, you're, you're itching for it. But I don't know. I, the couple stuff and the, the wedding stuff, I, I can't get enough of that. <laughs> Dude, I'm ready to go now. I, <laughs> 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 let's do an engagement shoot man we're gonna put you on a plane yeah right? <laughs> i will do hey dude i i want to get up there and shoot with y'all so i'm i'm down like four flat tires for hell that. yeah <laughs> hell yeah get up there quick yeah <laughs> we're gonna strap listen we we'll put the job we'll I mean, put the gopros models. we'll put the gopros on the camera man we'll do some behind the scenes for all all my followers on uh youtube we have to do that <laughs> yeah we have to do that. After this, send me your address. Heck yeah, yeah bro. I'll be up there. Yeah, that'd be fun. Man. The three it would, of us. man. And oh, it would be so fun. You know, that's the thing is like, you know, Sarah and I, one one thing that I really, dude, I had no idea that the, the YouTube was going to start to gain so much traction because I was just, you know, a wedding photographer and I just made a, a video about, uh, you know, my, why I ditched the D850 and went, went to mirrorless. And all of a sudden, I, you know, all these people want to listen to me. And the thing that's cool about it is, is I'm building like a real like community of people. Like I can actually talk to other people in the field and like, you know, just regular people who are out there working and me and Sarah, like are making connections with this stuff. And the yeah. best thing about it though, is we have something to offer the new people like you, me, Sarah and you, Scott, like I wish to God that I had some type of podcast like this or resource where I could like literally listen to people who are really out there in the field working and how they think and how they're operating because sure. you know, it's, it's invaluable. We, we learned all this stuff on our own. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I believe that wholeheartedly. And also like, cause I, I stumbled across you, um, uh, your work, uh, because of the Z six stuff. Yes. Yes. Because I, I, I've been shooting uh, D750s, mm -hmm. and uh, the second Nikon released that Z6, you know, everybody was shitting on it. <laughs> yeah. Most, it could have been mostly uh, Sony fanboys and, uh, you know, the whole uh, missing a second card slot and whatnot and all that stuff. But I, was, I went and tried it out at the local camera store and was blown away by it. And I was like, why is everybody shitting on this? So I'm like... I would go on YouTube quite a bit, and mm. I, I guess YouTube knows that I would type in Z6. About <laughs> they know. And so <laughs> my suggestions, and then I, I clicked on your videos, and then I must have watched like every one. I said, this is my man. <laughs> 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 we're, we're married to the Z6 game. Hell yeah. Uh, dude, I love that, and I, I love that y'all have the YouTube page because um, it's a it, ju just by going through the comments – listening uh to everything you put out the podcast all the youtube videos the community it looks like it's a pretty fun community it you is, got man and it's real you know it's real people but like it's funny you touch on the z6 like i, I do want to get into a little bit of gear with you so like what i already know how much you love the z line but like what are your what how has it been a new world for you stepping into a mirrorless from the dslr world yeah i like to know oh that. my god it's n i mean it's 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 stupid anybody who still shoots with dslrs yes i just wanna i wanna i, don't wanna, I know okay, i'll stop going down that road i was about to get physical with these people. 
<laughs> punch I'll the mic. Yeah, I'll take them down a different road. You know, I want to help get them to the light. Like it's it's so crazy because I used to do a lot of focus recompose with mm. the D750. Same. Because I mean, it, this is as basic as it gets. You only get those certain amount of focus points. Unless you go live view, mm-hmm. in which taking a shot takes forever. Yes. So nobody wants to be live view. You have these tiny little crap focus points in the middle. And if you're trying to do something creative with your framing and maybe have them kind of, you know, breaking the rules. You, we're not doing rules of thirds. You have them kind of up here mm-hmm. in this big nature scene. you got to focus recompose. And when you do that, depending on how wide open you might be shooting, your focus could be off. Like it's just a pain in the ass. And then when you go mirrorless. Mm. You have focus points all over the entire damn frame. Yep. And then you can go and have it on face or eye detect and it can just pick them it can pick them up naturally. Mm-hmm. Like it's just made shooting so much more fun. Yes. Because yep. I don't have to do any of this st- focus recompose is stupid. It is, man. It's old. You shit. shouldn't have to do it. It's and so your hand cool. shouldn't have to break to like take photos. I mean, oh my, my hands God. are so small, like I, I would be in aching pain by the end of the night with the, you know, because the battery pack on the bottom. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Well, yeah. now with this, these Z lenses, because I, I just got the 50 yesterday. My now, man. My, my <laughs> man. Dude, it, it, I'm going to talk about that, but just about the weight, like, uh. You don't. You no longer have the the converter or the adapter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not like uh, I'm looking at the Nikon 105 right now. That's a heavy piece. It's of, a beast. Yeah. It's a beast. But with that 50 on the Z6, it's so light. Mm. Yeah. And then it's so silent. The autofocus. You. Did, I didn't hear a damn thing. And then the shutter is even pretty damn quiet. It is. Yeah. Everything then, is. Everything, everything is quieter. Everything about that camera is amazing. Yeah. The pictures there. I mean, uh, I, before I. What was super important for me was um, how the color science was going to perform mm-hmm. uh, compared to the D750, wanting it to be similar, and was it going to be as sharp as the D750. And then it, I got the Z6, and the Z6 basically just took a shit on the D750, <laughs> right on top of it. And yes, like, it did. Like, the sharpness, everything with the pictures that come out of this, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And I just... Anybody who shoots DSLR, do yourself a favor. I would like it to be Nikon uh, Z6s that you go try, but yep. even if it's not, yep. go see something mirrorless. Help right. yourself. Hell yes. Yeah. This is another pro nugget, all right, yeah. for everybody listening. Doesn't mean that you can't Chick-fil-A take good nugget. shots with a DSLR, but you know, me and Sarah, it was funny because we were the first people to buy the Z6 at our local camera yeah. store. And Sarah, poor thing, she's 4'11". <laughs> she's tiny. And uh, she was shooting with the D700 with a 70 to 200 on the thing. Oh, God. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was crazy. So we we were the first ones to go buy. I was like, all right, honey, you know, I was like, we'll go get you the, the mirrorless. I, I was shooting D850 and a D810 as a backup. And... Uh, you know, so I was like, I'll just get her the mirrorless. We went in and got it, brought it home, unboxed it. I picked it up in my hand. It, five minutes later, we were back in the truck bought going back and one. bought a second one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just too good. I fell in love instantly. It was love at first sight, kind of like when I met Will. Oh, come on. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah, but that's, that's a handsome cat right there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. You know this, is, this is about you, Scott. All right. <laughs> um, uh, it, can't, it can't be just about me. <laughs> All right, it's about the community. (laughs) (laughs) I I don't D seven hundred and a seventy to two hundred, dude. Yeah, that's a beast, right there. Well, I made a I made a video on the D seven hundred too. We actually still have one for because we the color science on that is really really special. It was a a special point in time where they they made um, the Panasonic made their sensor and they had a, a specific algorithm that that read the information off the sensor and kind of you know turned it into color um and i just love the skin tones on it but dude as much as i love it i just love shooting with the z6 even more i mean Mm -hmm. you know i so i'll shoot with it sometimes here and there and um for formals yeah for even like sometimes detail shots but it's so loud that's like one of the biggest things like i'm like almost embarrassed now when i'm like at like a ceremony and i'm like oh this would be great with the d700 but i'm like this is embarrassing i look like a weirdo like what am i doing (laughs) you know like so i'm like just mirrors slapping up (laughs) yeah you you are so right because uh before i ordered the second z6 so i had a 
on one side of a money maker a Z6 and on the other side the D750 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and during ceremonies the Z6 is so quiet so I would put my money lens on the Z6 yeah because I, I would know that's what I'm getting most of the shots and then the other one is just clank 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 and the second I'm reaching for it I'm just like I gotta damn oh, it I gotta take pictures with this damn thing I yeah. know and just so ungrateful about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's heavy it's loud yeah. um it's, it, 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 what's so strange is it also comes back to fun. It's just so much more fun to shoot with a Z6. Oh, yeah. Well, well uh, we shoot in all black and white yeah. on the Z6, which is super cool. I love that. Yeah, and, you know, the thing is, is this is a good segue into one of the topics that I was talking about that I, I always circle back to on my channels. I, I, I literally pound this into the brains of the people who are watching is you need to do whatever's possible especially with weddings to take as many distractions and impediments to getting the shot out of your way as possible Mm. it's all about simplification i i could give a shit less what the s lenses look like if you think you know some people are like well they look like toy or kit lenses i really could care less it's about image quality and it's about getting the shot as I want to be moving through crowds in in a wedding like a snake. Like I don't want to be seen right. unless I need to be. Yep. I want to be as incognito as possible. And I could care less if I look like, you know, a, a hardcore photographer from 2001 with the battery grips and TTL cables and flashes and everything. That doesn't yeah. make you a professional. <laughs> no. no. It, it makes you uh, an eyesore to the... Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, it, it's so funny you say that because uh, when I first started, like I was so hung up on, oh, I have, to, I have to have this lens. It has to be a 1.4. I can't have the, the nifty 50 Nikon. That won't work. I, mm. I'm a pro. I need to have the... I felt like that you, too. Yep. I felt like that for the longest time and I'm and then I'm gear chasing. And while I'm gear chasing, I'm not even thinking about getting better at composition and actually getting better at photography. I'm just sitting here thinking, Oh, I have to have this type of gear. Right. And you don't need that shit. The one one eights and secondly, like the th- thirty five I have that's a one four. If I'm close to somebody and I'm shooting at that at one four, yeah. Half half the time it's shite. And then I have to get home and be like, I missed, I had so much out of focus on those eyelids. Mm. Yeah. So damn, it's, mm. I, I find myself more and more shooting at one, eight, two, 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 five. Yeah. Yeah. I get more exactly. details anyway. So like anybody who thinks that you need to have one fours and shit like that, or one twos, if you're Canon and stuff like that to, to be a professional, you don't. And it's no. bananas nope. to shit on a, a nifty fit. Like this, this one, eight we have it's crazy. It's one eight crazy. is the sweet spot. It is one yeah. eight is the sweet spot, or yeah. like F two. Or F two. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I love F two. I that's that's yeah. probably a home base for me here. And let, the only one I'll shoot at one four most of the time is the one oh five. Yeah. Just oh, I do. I'm trying to blow the background out. I've yeah. seen your wide open shots with that thing, and it, it, nobody's denying the fact that one one oh five is. A, that's a beautiful piece of glass. It, mm. it definitely is. But, you know, I just want to circle back because the thing is, is what we're getting at. You're talking to three professional photographers here, guys, or you're listening to three photo- professional photographers. And your bokeh is not going to save your shot. OK, like wide open shots all the time. If you don't have a compelling composition or real emotion and connection in your yep. in your photo you cannot just think that you're just going to shoot at one four and it's going to make beautiful images all the time you have to focus on composition and actually learning how to connect and and bring yes. out the best emotion in your clients yes mm-hmm. that's true yeah yeah it's um it's i don't know I, I i think just going through my kind of my life as a wedding photographer it seemed very newbie driven that I was so addicted to trying to get a hold of mm. all this one for like this crazy gear that just wasn't necessary. And the whole time you're focused on that, you're missing, you're missing the point. You're missing how to really be getting better. Totally. Right. Totally. Now, how far do you, cause I know that you said you had, um, like a lot of local brides, um, and how far do you travel? Like, do you, do you go like a couple hours away or, yeah, you got a family. Uh, yeah. So in Charlotte, um, I'm kind of central to beach and mountains. Okay. So oh. I'm always 
about every week and I'm either kind of in the Blue Ridge Parkway mm -hmm. up in Asheville or some of these places or I'm around Wilmington, Charleston beaches and shooting. So I've, it's kind of those three spots. I've gone down to, I've shot engagements and proposals and stuff like that at uh, Disney World. Like I'll travel anywhere. Mm. Yeah, nice. Okay. My God, I would love to get to places like Iceland and all these cool. Oh, stuff. hell so, yeah! Yes, us too. If I can get a hold of somebody that wants to I want know. to do a wedding there or something like that, I'm so dead. I'll yeah. I mean, I speak for all of us. We'd, we'd probably travel to the moon to get a few shots. Yeah. Oh 100%. God, the moon would be awesome. There's an astronaut couple listening. Yeah. <laughs> we are down. Hire us. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm Iceland. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, our sister is in. Um, Ash, she's in Asheville, right? Yeah, she, my yeah. sister. My yeah. sister is. Uh, she goes to college out in Nashville. So yeah, oh, UNC yeah. Asheville, probably. I'm guessing. I honestly, I don't know There's where she's so in her, up there. a, a yeah. master's program for psychology, but uh, yeah, she, it's beautiful out there. If you, dude, the next time you're all there, y'all gotta let me know. We'll we, come up there and do the the craft beer tour. Hell oh, yeah, yeah, my man. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> brewing like all these places. We'll just go around and uh, yeah, we'll, have, we'll probably have to have a place up there because we'll. We'd probably get tanked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. Uh, Actually, uh, it's so I, yeah, cool. she loves it. And there's a lot of picture. Like, she posts so many beautiful pictures. Oh, it's beautiful I mean, up there's there, yeah. mountains. You get the and mountains. Water. Yeah, it's great. Oh, and then you got the Biltmore up there, which yes. is crazy. Mm. She was telling me that I needed to go shoot there. She said it was absolutely beautiful. It's a, you guys would be, if you would shoot a couple there, I would schedule it for the entire damn day. It's like a playground for photographers. It's humongous. Ugh. Oh, man. Love like, that. It's sunflower fields, uh, obviously the Biltmore, the, you have like horse-drawn carriages. Um, it, they have these huge gardens. Like, it's just, it's ridiculous. You Love could be it. there all day and not see about 80% of it. I yeah, love it. I love locations like that where like, um, you know, I, I try to take brides or when I'm talking to them for engagement shoots, like I try to uh, look up some places that have multiple locations in one, you know, water, yeah. trees, mountains, stuff like that. True. Um, you know, I was saying before, like how a bride was like, oh, I'd love to shoot in a volcano. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like where can I find like a super cool place that would have like a volcano? Yeah. That, is the, that was the coolest answer we got. From, like, where would you want to shoot before? I was like, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would. So cool. God, I would too, man. Imagine that. So, one thing, one of the last things I wanted to ask you, Scott, is um, in for the for the new guys, I think this would help. I, I did a video before about how Sarah and I started um, getting business and booking when we were new. Yeah. Like, how did you start? Like, did you just um, like how did you go about getting a portfolio or advertising yourself and getting those first few weddings? Similar, uh, very similar to to your guys' story. I would shoot weddings for free i would shoot them for dirt cheap mm -hmm. uh, uh like 100 100 200 300 400 500 but free because in my head and you know some people uh, i had some coworkers like oh you're crazy you got to charge some money and i'm like i have no portfolio yes right need to get i need to get these moments i need to get these pictures to start building up so i can start attracting people so don't be i would tell people don't be afraid to do free work because it's not free, really. It's an investment. These pictures are going to get you money. Yes. Yeah, and if you uh, love it, then, I mean, it's not work anyways. You know? Exactly. And then it's risk-free. Right. Yes. Because right, exactly. They're not paying you a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can... And they you know, know where you're at. It, exactly. Yeah. And you can have your you can have your fuck-ups. Yep. Yep. Because it's, it's a free wedding. Yeah. You're, they, they, you, when you hire or get a photographer for free, yep. you have to know what you're getting into a bit. Um, I mean, a lot of these, uh, brides would, they'd see my work cause obviously I'm shooting couples and families and stuff like that anyway. So the, the work is good. Just didn't have any, uh, weddings under my belt. So I would just tell people, anybody who's out there trying to get into it, get out there and do this for free yeah. or yeah. It, before you even get to weddings. If you haven't shot in couples much, reach out to your friends. Right. Yes. Uh, that's what we do. Some style do shoots for them. Yeah. Style shoots. Uh, yeah. It's if you can't get it going, then you're lazy. Yeah. Because yeah. Thank you. You can shoot free weddings. You can shoot couples for free. You can get your content up and your experience up just from friends, neighbors, and just doing some Google searches. Right. Is anybody, you know, out there getting married that, you know, you might find some people that maybe don't have the money and maybe their uh, times are hard or whatever. Find somebody that you can shoot for free 
um, or give back, you know, yeah. a few hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just start getting that content up. Yeah. Get yep. that experience up. Yep, one hundred percent. I always say this too is, um, you know, in the beginning, it, people think, oh, oh, my worth, my work is worth this, or you know, I, I, I should be paid this. Well, you, let me tell you something. Your work isn't worth shit if no one's willing to pay you for it. You know what I mean? So the thing is, is you might be a great photographer and you might have been awesome at shooting your kids and, you know, doing street photography and all that stuff. But the bottom line is, if people are going to pay, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand, upwards of four thousand, six thousand dollars, they want to see that, you know what you're doing, you're a professional. So you have to get that. You have to get your clout up and you got to go out yeah. there and you got to do whatever it takes to get your content. And I love the fact that you just put it out there because because that's how I am, dude. I, I'm, I'm, I'll am i say it to your face. Like if you're if you can't get it going, especially in this economy, it's just you're just lazy and you're not getting off your ass to go out there and do it. Oh, yeah. And I still do that now. So like if I ever get new equipment or new if I'm trying out some new flash techniques or anything like that, I'll just reach out to a couple or somebody I know. I'm like, hey, man, let, let's go do this free shoot over at this uh, this new building that just opened up. I got some flash stuff I'm trying to check out. Yep. Or anything like that, and then just give them the pictures for free, and I got to experiment and get some more experience. So like, and similar to you, also in starting, I also reached out to a lot of um, wedding photographers in the area and asked if I could second shoot. Even if I couldn't second shoot, asked if I could just assist, hold bags, hold light stands, anything I could do. Because at that point, I felt like, okay, I know how to use a camera. Mm. I don't know how to navigate a wedding day. Yeah. So yeah. just being there in person. And I even offered some photographers to pay them to let me be there. For <laughs> yeah. I, would have, I would have done anything just to get the experience. Yep. Because um, then when you start, uh, it was nice. Uh, it was a confidence builder. It was nice to see them doing stuff that I thought in my head I would do. So it's like, mm. oh, okay, I would have did it that way too. So then you start feeling better about yourself. The confidence mm. starts going up and you're like, okay, I could really do this. Yes. Yeah. Especially after you do two or three second shoots or assists or stuff like that. And you're like, okay, I got the skills. I'm yeah. learning kind of how to navigate the day, set expectations, um, kind of learning how to troubleshoot, dealing with people during the day and stuff like yeah. that. And uh, yeah. it's yeah. it's not free. I mean, I'm saying you're doing it for free. You're getting something out of it. Yeah. You're getting so much out of it. And uh, so anybody that's just going to whinge on, oh, I'm not getting paid for this shit. You're getting so much more than you think. Right, yep. right. So suck and it I, up. And if always, you love this, get out there and shoot it. I always say like going into the wedding, like when you're a newbie and you're just starting out, is to go in – Com- like with confidence that you know what you're doing because if you're going in with confidence then you're going to feel good they're going to feel good I mean you may be like shit I have no idea what I'm doing but heart palpitations yeah, yeah. <laughs> anxiety is on level 100 um, but I mean going in you know and just acting like you know I mean you're going to feel good um, yeah just going in with that humility I love how you said that you were willing to pay or you're willing to carry bags for somebody yeah that's great I mean I was the exact same way Scott, I went in always with a level of humility of, hey, listen, I'm here yep. to learn. I'm not trying to control things. I'm a new guy. And yeah, I know how to use a camera, but I don't know how to navigate a wedding, just like you said. So yeah, you got to put in I'm the still, work. Yep. I'm still like that. There's still so much more to learn. Like if, if you guys are ever down here, I'll hold y'all's bags and we'll yeah. <laughs> yep. If y'all are shooting a wedding down here, Asheville or anything like that, I'll head up and, uh, you know, hold the yeah. bags and the beers. Well, and we'll buy the beers after. Yeah. How about that? There we go. See, see <laughs> yeah. the right there. That's a good exchange. I mean, it's a community event. <laughs> I'm always going into it like watching Will too. Like I'm still learning from like sometimes I look and see what Will's doing. And I'm like, oh wow, okay, well that that shot's cool. And like now I'll know next time. You know, I'm always looking at like what he's doing and stuff like that just to get some learn some stuff. Um, An attitude of humility will get you far in not only photography but everything in life. Yeah. Nobody wants to listen to the person who thinks that they have it all figured out. That's true. You know what I'm saying? I wish I had it all figured out. Sometimes it's Sarah you said something important too with uh, uh, being positive and you know having that good attitude and showing up with the confidence because yeah the bride is stressed out of her mind oh yeah to start the day so when she comes in and sees that 
you've got it all together and you're excited and you're about to it it i I feel like it makes her feel more at ease oh and that's that's the kind of attitude i'll take into it too with just talking with them so when problems come up like i got you i got you girlfriend we gonna knock this out don't worry about it girl take it easy we got this like (laughs) i've been there done that been a bride been to so many weddings but the first like interaction with those brides in the room is so important because there's some bridesmaids too that like I walk in I'm this little thing they're like who is this girl like <laughs> what is she gonna do and I'm like hey girl the music's going I'm I'm dancing I'm doing the salsa like you know yeah. they're like all right she's cool like you know so like going in and having that good vibe the first the first like five seconds is just your day's gonna go your day's gonna go great um but yeah, I mean, before we go, um, I mean, do you have any more any questions for us or anything you, you know? Wanna... I did have one thing. I uh, learning how you guys were shooting in black and white. So on the Z6, now I don't, I haven't done this, but I've been wanting to to try it ever since hearing that. When you set your camera up like that, yep. I I I like what you're saying because I've told you guys before that you you guys have an amazing understanding of light. So when you're seeing in black and white, it helps that much more to kind of see where all the lights falling and things like that. How does how does the camera do that? Is it taking a JPEG along with a RAW to do that, or is it? Yeah, so it, it, we shoot in RAW, and it's it's actually embedding a JPEG in the RAW file for a preview. So and it also does since we have the you know the Z6, it it does it in the EVF, so we can see it all in black and white. And honestly. Mm-hmm. The, the black and white file is pretty much comparable to what actually gets exported. So, like, mm. you use Lightroom or you use Capture One? Uh, Lightroom. Okay, so, yeah, us too. So, as soon as you click over on, uh, you know, you can click between color and, and, and black and white. So, as soon as you click over to black and white, it looks pretty much the same as the, the preview JPEG file. Yeah. And I'm telling you, man, it will change your view of how you see light and shadows it really will will change your life because i'll go to like the other day i was shooting in color because i had just happened to have it in color because um actually i shoot on the dance floor um in color yeah and uh, just on the dance floor Yeah. yeah but then i going to the other wedding i was still in color and i started shooting i'm like oh like i no like i had to switch back to black and white because i i just feel so i it's easy. I like it more. I like it more shooting yeah. in black and white. Yeah, I really do. No, it's interesting because I had um, I listened to a, a podcast once or it might have been something on YouTube where uh, a famous photographer was saying that when he would hire new uh, second shooters or assistants, he would make them shoot in black and white. Oh, wow. For hmm. their first few weddings so that they could get cool. an understanding of uh, uh, highlights and shadows and light. It really is. So, it comes down as soon as I saw that uh, video you put out, I was like, damn, they, these, these guys got it all figured out. Man. <laughs> no, we don't, man. No, no, no. no we I'm don't. I'm going to set that up. I got I, I think I'm going to do that for my next shoot. That sounds. Do it. Try it. And, yeah. you know, I would, I would say practice like with your kids and stuff, take them out for an hour or two and just shoot some, um, some photos with them because it yeah. definitely is like a, there's a, um, not a learning curve, but an adjustment curve because you're just removing one layer of something that you're relying on, which is checking your colors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like you're kind of, if you shoot a lot in color, you, 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 re- you kind of rely on it for the, for when you're checking your composure because mm-hmm. it yeah. adds, it adds an element. Yeah. But, um, once you get rid of that and you start to really just focus on, okay, how do my highlights look? How does the fall off look? Uh, what's the micro contrast look like? Uh, where's the light coming? It, that's another thing that's major for us is it helps us identify the actual direction of light a yeah, lot faster. Light. Yep. Yep. You know, yeah. like because well, light, you know, it, it it's not just you look at the sun and that's where the light's coming from. No, it, it, light bounces around. It's like I, I equate light to water. So it's kind of like a hose. Like if, if the if the sun is the hose, the nozzle, it's spraying down, but it's also bouncing off around a lot of different things. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are just seeing light and shadows in black and white, it helps you uh, determine just like, you know, kind of where it's coming from and in, 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 in a much easier and simpler way. It's great analysis, yeah. babe. You like no, that? I, I like that. Uh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm, gonna start, I'm gonna practice that this week. Yeah. Gonna, make sure I'm you tell us. We, I feel like we yeah. should have started the podcast with that because that's like the that's like a good nugget there. Oh yeah. You know? I hope I people go, make it to the end of this. I know because no, I could go I, on I, and on about it. I mean, you guys kill it so well with um, 
all your pictures and we like I said, the comments I've left on your your page just talking about how how amazing y'all's understanding of light is and uh, so I know well, you commented on something of yeah. mine and I was like wow well, we, we so appreciate sweet. it, man, because we're not the type of people that just kind of just, you know, throw stuff out there for just, uh, you know, for so, hey, I'm going to give you a comment just so you notice me. Oh, it's no. not like that. Yeah. Like, no, no. You know, we really do feel like we got you on the podcast. So we looked at your work and I was like, hey, babe, yep. check out Scott. Like, let's get him on the podcast. I was like, oh, Scott. Yeah, I already <laughs> look at his stuff like I love that guy. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to travel to Iceland. With you oh, Hell for yeah. sure. For sure. Yes. I just got to find him first. Yeah. That's right, man. Yep. All right, brother. Listen, Can't wait man. to have you again. This has been a freaking Anything. good time. Yeah. This is, yeah, this was a lot of fun, man. Yeah. If, if y'all do ever come here, we we'll have to do this live in a brewery. Oh, for sure. Oh, my God. We're going to bring the whole setup, so bro. So cool. Uh, like, I, I know a lot of breweries around here that would give us their back room. and we That's could... super cool, man. I love Something that. Something to think about. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're going to get you on the podcast again, Scott. Yeah. And, um, you know, man, we're going to promote this, and uh, we'll shout you out and, uh, you know, put it up on our YouTube page and all that. And, uh, dude, yeah. we appreciate the time, my man. Hey, thank you guys. Thank, thanks for having me. This is a blast. I, I, I can't wait to get, get back on here with y'all. All right, yeah, brother. We'll talk to talk you soon, again. man. Bye. All right, later. Bye.